everyone, it's Schematic Med and today we are going to talk about anatomical position, wrist, finger and thumb joint movements. If we want to understand what is lateral and what is medial for hand and forearm, we need to know what is anatomical position. If you look at this picture, you can see my hands and what I want to show here that this is the midline of the body. And remember, the anatomical position is when palm is facing forward. In this position, two forearm bones, the ulna and radius, are parallel to each other. And that's why this is the correct anatomical position. If we look at this side, we can see that here the hand is pronated. So when we're pronating, we're going to talk about what is supination, what is pronation very thoroughly, but at this point, just remember that when we're pronating our hand, the two forearm bones, they cross each other. So that's why this is not the correct anatomical position. In anatomical position, the pinky finger is always at the medial side of the body. So it is the closest to the midline and the thumb is always at the lateral side of the body. And we need to know that ulna is at the side of the pinky finger and that means it is always at the medial side of the body and the radius is at the side of the thumb and therefore it is at the lateral side of the body. Here you can see me, so I'm showing here again what is anatomical position, correct anatomical position. The palm is facing forward, the pinky finger is at the medial side and the thumb is at the lateral side. Now let's talk about joint movements and the terminology, what the words mean. So when we're talking about the wrist flexion, it is a bending of the hand so that your palm is facing toward your arm. So this is the front view and this is the side view. So let's look. When we're talking about the wrist extension, it is a band of hand where the back of the hand is facing towards the back of the forearm. This is the front view and this is a lateral view. Let's look. So generally said, when we're saying joint is flexed, it is bending the joint. And when we're saying joint is extended, it means that we are releasing deflection. So here we can see finger flexion and finger extension. We are bending the finger joints toward the palm. And we are releasing the flexion. We are opening the fingers. That is the extension. Now let's talk about the adduction and abduction. It can be a little tricky, but I will tell you something that you will remember forever. So how I remember this, it is that adduction has the word add. Like we are adding something toward our body, towards something is coming toward us. So yeah, when, when we are saying adduction, it is we are moving body part toward us. And when we are saying abduction, it is like I, I imagine that it is the opposite of the adding. So we are removing something, something is going away from us. So that is the abduction. And same for the fingers. When, when our fingers is coming together, there is a joining together, they are adding together. So that is the adduction and when they are going away from each other, that is abduction. So let's see the movement of wrist adduction. So we are adding the wrist toward our body. And abduction, we are removing the wrist, the hand is going away from our body. What I want to mention here, that sometimes you can see that wrist adduction is also called ulnar deviation. So I already said it once, the ulna is positioned, the bone is positioned at the same side of the pinky finger. So when we are deviating towards the ulna, it means ulnar deviation or wrist adduction. And therefore it is very logical if I say the wrist abduction is called radial deviation. 
because the radius is positioned at the same side of the thumb. Let's look how fingers are adducted, so they're joining together, we're adding them together. And finger abduction, they're going away from each other. Next, I talked a little about this, this supination and pronation. This is actually very easy to remember because the supination word has up in it. So we're moving our palm up. And the pronation is the opposite movement when we're moving our palm down. Next. So thumb flexion and extension. We already said that we say flexion is when we're bending the joint. So we can see deflection here, it is flexed. And when we're opening deflection, we call it extension. Please do not confuse extension with adduction. So in this picture, you can see that at the same time, our thumb is extended, but at the same time, it is away from our other fingers. So you can ask me why we don't call this abduction. So actually, that, that was the main question that I was asking while learning. So don't be confused. The, when we are saying the extension, it is the, when we are releasing the bending of the joint. Actually, you're right. It is at the same time it is extended and at the same time it is abducted. When our hand is moving, all the muscles, they work together. It's not like one muscle is flexing and one muscle is doing job and other ones, they are not participating. So when I'm extending, at the same time I can abduct my hand, okay? So we're going to see the videos and pictures of abduction of thumb and don't let this confuse you. So the pictures can be very similar. So let's see how the thumb is flexed. And let's see how it is extended. Next, what I was talking about, let's start to understand what is abduction and adduction. Actually, it is the same concept that I already told you when something is joining to our body and abduction when something is leaving from our body. But at first, let's talk about the abduction. It is a little complicated. So we have two types of abduction. So we have palmar and radial thumb abduction. Here you can see the front view and side view. Front view and side view. So, okay, so when we're saying palmar thumb abduction, so we are moving our thumb away from our other fingers and at the same time our thumb is at the same plane as our palm. So when we see it from the side view, at this point actually my thumb is abducted but you cannot see because it has the same plane as our palm and when we're saying the radial thumb abduction we're moving away our thumb so it is positioned at the same plane as the radius so that's why it's called radial abduction but when we're looking at the side view we can see that uh, our thumb is away from our fingers and our palm and at the same time it is the same it's like continuation of the radius let's see the movement and the side view you, you you can see that my thumb is not visible from the side view and radial abduction why i talked about the abduction because the adduction we're adding something is the opposite movement so we're just releasing so we're just bringing back the thumb it doesn't matter it is from palmar abduction or radial abduction it, it is you can see the both here the both examples here that's it we have two more movements of thumb opposition and reposition opposition is helping us to grab things so let's see the movement And reposition is when we are repositioning our fingers back. Thank you. Bye.